Um, let's give it up for Laura, making maps with JavaScript. Woo! All right, I'm gonna stand up because I get really excited about maps and I feel like if I'm sitting down, I'll just be like swinging around in the chair too much. All right, uh, so tonight I'm gonna talk to you guys about maps uh, with JavaScript because what else would you make a map with? Well, traditionally you'd make it with a lot of other things, but in the web world, you wanna make it with JavaScript. My name is Laura Stedman. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Adventure Steady. Uh, I currently work at Twitter. Um, about four years ago, I started a code school. So um, if you're in code school or thinking about getting into programming or scared of JavaScript, I was scared of JavaScript at one point, and now I think it's awesome. So um, you know, just keep with it. Uh, first off, if you want to see some code, I have a couple of examples I'll walk through. They're super basic, um, but that's the GitHub link if you're interested. Uh, tonight, what we're going to talk about is, we're going to talk about a few things. First off, thinking about why do you want to have a map anyway? Like, like why have a map? Like, do you really need a map? There's lots of reasons to have a map. Uh, understanding what a map is made of. So, like, maps are actually different components. And when you first start getting into making maps on the web, um, at least when I first started doing it on the web, uh, it was really confusing to me. Like, there's all these different libraries and sources for things. Like, what, what do I actually need to do? So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then we'll talk about what are some of your options? What are some of the libraries that are available? And what might you want to use or might you not want to use? Um, and hopefully I'll show you some things that you don't know about. Well, also, I'm also going to show you some cool things you can do that you might not know about. Um, and then finally, a few resources so that you can keep learning more if you want to. Um, Quick question, has anybody made a map with JavaScript before? A couple people? OK, not too many. How many people are like familiar with JavaScript a little bit, like a little scared of semicolons, but it's OK, you try it? OK, I was trying to get a good feel. All right, so first off, why do you want a map? Uh, maps are really, when you get boils down to it, it's a type of data visualization. Um, and you're displaying specifically spatial data, data with coordinates that map locations to the real world, right? So where are they on, on the globe, if you will? Or maybe it's a fake globe, even. Um, there's lots of different ways to display that data on the web. And not every solution is the right solution for the data that you might have. Um, so. I really, when I think about making maps and data visualizations in general, understanding like, what you're trying to get across to your audience is really important. Like, what is the message you're trying to get? What are you trying to help them do? Thinking about that helps inform you, helps inform what it is that you're trying to build. Um, so for example, maybe you're trying to provide directions. Like today, I had to come here from downtown, right? Like everybody does this on Google Maps all the time. How do I get there? Where do I turn? It's a little different than navigation. Uh, Uber just posted an article, it was uh, in the last couple of days, about how they're redesigning their um, driver apps to help them focus on navigation, help them simplify the process of focusing on how do I get to the next rider? How do I get to their destination? If you're doing Uber pool, I don't know if you've ever done that, but like you'll be riding and they'll stop and pick someone else up and they'll drop someone off. And how do they do that and keep it simple, keep the driver focused on driving, right? That's really important. So they make specific design choices to make that happen. Another reason you might want a map is to show analysis results. Uh, so this is called a chloropleth map. Has anyone heard that word before? OK, cool. I'm just always curious, like, who knows what? Um, so a chloropleth map is basically, um, I've done some sort of analysis. In this case, it is unemployment rates uh, across the US by county. Uh, and you're, you're putting things into buckets, right? So, by, so this one is unemployment rate by percentage. So you've got one bucket, for example, that's 9% um, and above. So if it's above 9%, it's in the same color bucket. Um, and there's lots of ways to make those buckets if you get into 
making these kinds of analysis maps, but it's very different than showing a route, right? Like, this is a very different map. Uh, this one um, is made by Mike Bostock, who's the creator of D3. So this is actually a D3 map, which is pretty cool. Another reason you might want to use a map, especially on your website, is just to show some context, to give the user some sort of um, information about what you're talking about, right? This is an example from State of the Map US, which is an annual conference um, in the geo world. And it's just showing where their conference is. And you can click on the buildings on it, and it's like, oh, here are the conference events. Here's the hotel that everything's going to be at. So it's not really, you're not navigating with it. You're not exploring some analysis. You're just figuring out where you're going to be. Maybe, maybe you don't want to like give someone exactly information, but you want to tell a story, right? Maps and data are great for telling a story and getting across some kind of bigger piece of information that you want from your use, you want your users to see. So this is a really cool one. I'm actually going to show you because I thought it was cool. Um, this is called Arya's Journey from the Game of Thrones, and it's actually a story map. So this is a fake place, right? This isn't doesn't exist in the real world. So, sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's a it's really cool. Like there's this map, and you can like zoom in on it, and it tells you like you can look at pictures. You can kind of explore where are things in the world of Game of Thrones, and like build this context of the storyline, right? Like, what's at Acorn Hall? <laughs> the guy with the, without an eye, you know? Um, so that's like a really cool use of maps, right? Like, you're telling a story and giving people this way to explore a story in many different dimensions and explore it at their own pace and go back and forth. And um, it, this is a really cool one. I really like that one, so. Uh, all right. I want to present. OK, so there's obviously lots of different ways to use a map on your website, on your web app to do cool things. I'm sure there are other reasons that you guys can think of. Um, but moving on, what, like, what is a map? Like, I've shown you different kinds of maps, but what is a map? What is it made of? And this was a piece that I struggled with. So I have a background. I used to be a GIS analyst. So I worked on desktop software, building maps. Um, I did an internship for the Park Service, for example. And I built uh, geology maps for our field workers and maps of springs, like freshwater springs in the desert. It was a very different experience than building maps on the web. Uh, and so when I first started doing this, it was really confusing to me because things fit together a little differently. So the three main pieces of a web app, the way that I think of them at least, are you have a base map, you have a data layer, and then you have UI interactions. So let's dig into those a little bit. A base map is basically your canvas, right? It's sort of the, building, the base layer that you're going to use to build your story, whatever it is, whether it's giving people directions or telling people about the Game of Thrones. A lot of times it looks something like this, right? That's pretty recognizable. There's not, you're not like analyzing anything here. You're just showing, here's the United States. Here's the terrain. Um, so a base map on the web is usually made of raster tiles. So rasters are just JPEGs, PNGs. They're images made of pixels. So if you ever load up Google Maps and inspect it in Chrome, You'll, you'll find there's just a bunch of images that are loading. If you ever have a bad connection and you try to load up Google Maps or some other map, uh, even on your phone, you'll see it loading up in blocks. Have you guys seen that before? Yes, some of you. Uh, it's because we're loading it in tiles. And so that's the way that web maps, base maps are loaded is we use this, this tile grid to talk to the server and say, hey, what do I actually need to show? What zoom level? Like, how close to the ground do I need to be when I show this? Um, and what, like, what have I loaded? What haven't I loaded? Uh, and so traditionally, we use these raster tiles. So they're just JPEGs getting loaded onto your screen. 
A newer thing is vector tiles. So raster, they're blocks of images, pixels. Vectors are lines, right? So uh, like D3 uses SVG, those are vectors. So vector tiles have been around for a while, but um, I feel like in the last year or two are really starting to take off. Uh, the browser can finally handle them. Uh, so what's really cool about them is when you zoom in, you don't have to go find a new image necessarily. Like you, you've got a line, so it's still crisp. You can redraw it if you need to. So this is another example. Uh, so MapZen, Zen is a company that produces base maps, uh, and they have a vector tile service. And so this is actually for D3. So if you look at this here, I don't know how well you can see it, but um, we're actually loading up SVGs, and the tile itself is, is an SVG, which is pretty cool. Like All those lines are drawn on your screen there. We're still loading them in tiles, because that's a really fast way to say, hey, I need these six tiles for the view frame. Just give me those. And if you zoom out, oh, I need 10 tiles now, right? Uh, so data layers, so that's the second component to a map. What are you telling your story about? What kind of data do you want your audience to see or interact with? Uh, traditionally, you think of them in terms of points, lines, and polygons, so points, locations, right? If you type in CodeCraft on Google Maps, you'll probably get a little point marker. You guys all know what that looks like. A line is like a route, right? When you say, how do I get from downtown Boulder to CodeCraft. It draws a line on there. A polygon, you can think of something as like a county, a building outline. Um, those are all pretty intuitive, but they're different kinds, and you have to interact with them a little bit, a little bit differently. So finally, you have UI interactions, right? Everybody's zoomed in on a map. Everybody's panned around. You clicked on things, and things pop up. Interactions, but those really make a big difference when you're building your map what kind of interactions you allow, and how you build them in, right? Um, another one that you'll see sometimes on maps is being able to turn on and off data layers. And you don't see this as much uh, on like modern web maps, but in the more traditional GIS space, you frequently see these big bulky maps with like 15 different data layers. You can turn them all on and off. Um, but that's something that you can do with your web map. Like, don't think you can't. You can have multiple layers, let people turn them on and off, and see how they interact. So one important note is you won't always have all of these components. Just because they're the three sort of main ones that you'll usually have, I'm not going to tell you that you have to have UI interaction, right? It can be a static map that you can't click on. I don't know if I would recommend not having data, because that's like, why do you have a map? Unless your base map is just really cool. Um, uh, like you could maybe not have a base map if you do things a certain way. So how do you actually go about making a map with JavaScript? Like, What are your options here? Have, has anyone ever sort of looked around at maps on the internet and like how you might go about making a web map? No? A couple of people? Um, when you start Googling it, there's a lot of options. In, you might just be tempted to go with like Google Maps. There's a lot of other options. How do you combine all these things? You, you need a library to help you do it. So there's a bunch of them. So I mentioned Google Maps. Uh, they're pretty standard. Leaflet is another really great JavaScript library. It's open source. Um, D3, which is data visualization library. You can make maps in it. They've got great um, support for Projections, Leaflet, I think, is also getting really great support for projections, which is how do you make that 3D globe 2D? How do you map that space? And there's implications there for if you have a 3D globe and I'm in Antarctica, do I distort the shape of it or the size of it? Like something has to give because you can't just go like this and everything be perfect. <laughs> A really con that's a really that's a talk in itself. Uh, so, so D3, Leaflet, Google Maps, uh, High Maps, which is related to high charts, if any of you have ever used that to make um, like really configurable graphs. They do a lot of the sort of legwork for you. Uh, MapZen provides a bunch of stuff. And then OpenLayers3 is another source. And this is definitely not inclusive. It's just 
a few good examples. So base maps, how do you actually get a base map? When you use some sort of library like uh, Google Maps API or uh, Leaflet, um, a lot of times they'll provide or suggest, you, suggest one for you. Um, many of them are for free. You can pay for them. Uh, and you can also make your own custom base maps. So just a few providers. Uh, again, uh, Stamen is a really cool mapping company that they provide really neat uh, base layers. I'll show you a few in a minute. Uh, Mapbox is a web mapping company. They're doing a lot of stuff in the, the geospace. Uh, you can get their layers. You can also build custom uh, layers with them. Maps in. OpenStreetMap is an open source map. So you can go on OpenStreetMap.com and look at, let's say, your neighborhood. And if your street address isn't on your building, you can add it. If you go to, let's say you go camping somewhere, and you say, wow, that was a really great camping spot, you can go on OpenStreetMap and add it as a camping site. So it's taking open source data and crowdsourcing to build a base map. It's really cool. Um, it's a really cool organization. It's really it's kind of fun to like poke around on satellite imagery and be like, oh, I'm adding this thing. Um, so again, Google provides base maps. Esri or ESRI, um, they're a traditional, or started as a traditional mapping company. They've definitely moved into the web space. They also provide a number of base maps. So you've got options. Uh, so here are a few just sort of like what they look like. So Mapbox provides satellite data. They also provide these really nice, um, um, like different shaded uh, base maps. Uh, this is an example of Stamen. Stamen recently came out with a terrain map, which is really nice. So providing like that terrain data with some road information as your base map that you can then put your own data on top of. Uh, again, like I said, you can make your own custom base maps, and this is really fun. So these are a couple of examples of custom base maps that people have made. So this one here on the left is a like a Roy Lichtenstein inspired like comic pop art map, and then on the the one on the right is like a pirate map, which I really like. Um, but there's like there's all kinds of maps, base maps. You can get all kinds of inspiration. Um, they use a lot of the map like custom mapping studios, uh, you use something that's kind of similar to CSS to define what it looks like. So if you've done a little bit of CSS, it's really fun to play around with making your own base map. It feels a little similar. Uh, one caveat about getting base maps is, A, be careful about where you get it from, and B, don't build a web app, throw a base map on there, and just expect it to work forever. Um, MapQuest. Uh, you guys remember MapQuest, right? Uh, they provided a free base map, free world base map, for a long time and started sending out notices to people that they could and you know, posting on the website, hey, we're deprecating our base map. And then eventually they turned it off. And so people went to their weather site and saw that. Which is, where is that? I have no idea. Um, so that's. You know, one caveat, like if you're using someone else's base map, you're using a service, right? And you should do this with your software libraries too, right? Like keep things up to date, make sure that they still work, or else you'll get a sad image background. And you can see here too, like those are tiles, right? Because that image gets repeated. So they're just like loading the same tile in for every tile spot. All right, so let's do a couple of demos. I'm going to show you using base maps with uh, Google and Stamen, and then also adding some data to a map with Leaflet. Super simple. And let's see. I don't know that I need that. All right, so first up, let's go to. All right, can you guys see that OK? All right, so I'm doing the same thing here, basically. On the top is a map. I haven't put any data on it, but it's a Google base map. On the bottom is a stamen base map. Like, they look really similar, but a little bit different, right? So when you're making design choices of like how you want to build a map, you've got options to play with. So let me show you how I did this real quick. 
Do you guys see this okay? Is that good? Okay, so I've got some super basic styling, a gray background, because why not? Um, when you build a map, you usually have to tell it what is, what is the bounding area of your map. So how tall do I want it to be? How wide do I want it to be? And you can kind of play with that to whatever you want. Um, uh, most uh, map libraries, you tell it, you say, here's a div, it's empty, it's got an ID, and then in your JavaScript code, you tell it, hey map, go attach yourself to this div. So here I've got a Google map div, and then I've got a Stamen div. Um, so you have to load in your Google map. You need a special key to do it. Um, and then here I'm also loading in uh, the Stamen tiles. So when you build a map, you want to tell it where the center point is, right? Where, where does the map go in the world to start? You also tell it the zoom layer, like how far in do I want to be zoomed in or out? Do I want to see the whole world? Do I want to see the state of Colorado? Do I want to see Boulder? Um, pretty basic. So I've got a couple of functions here. So uh, I am, let's see, I'm building a basic map, right? So this is, I'm getting the Google map div that I created earlier. Um, and then I'm creating a new Google map. And I'm telling it where the center is and where the zoom is. And then for the stamen map, right, that's that other map, I'm getting that thing, getting that uh, div. I'm still using Google's API to render my map object and render the UI. I'm, I'm using all of those tools that Google is giving me. I'm just substituting my own base map, which is kind of fun. So if you have an app or a website that has a Google Maps um, you know, map, if you get tired of that base map, you can put something else in there, which is kind of fun. So again, I'm telling it where the center is. I'm telling it where the zoom is. Uh, the trick to change it is you have to tell it the map type ID, and you have to give it this map controller options. And then I'm just setting the layer with my uh, layer type. And then I'm, I'm just sort of kicking off these two things and building them. So that's all it took to do those two things. It's pretty, pretty easy, right? If I want to change, Stamen has several, uh, several base maps you can use. So all I had to do is, excuse me, give it the different name. And now I have a very different map down here. I'm like zoomed, there we go. So this is their toner map, which is kind of fun. It's like you copied it on a Xerox machine. San Francisco looks really good. That's like their um, example. Now, so that's kind of fun. Right? That's a very specific kind of map that you might want to display data on. It might not be a general purpose routing or something, but you could do something really cool with that. Um, all right, so the, the second example I said I was going to show you is um, loading data, loading some data onto your map. So I downloaded from. Uh, Opus to Basin Mountain Parks, uh, Boulder has some great open GIS data. So if you're interested in playing with GIS data, like definitely go and, play, go and like check it out. Um, so I downloaded some data as GeoJSON, which is just a data format. It's, it looks like JSON, but it's for geodata. So all I had to do with this, so this one I'm using um, Leaflet, I believe. Yep, so I'm using Leaflet to build this. So I've just pulled in Leaflet as a CDN, uh, and I'm using jQuery to help me do a couple of things. Again, I've got my center, I've got my zoom, I've got my div with my ID. It's pretty basic. I'm saying, give me a base layer. So I'm saying, uh, stamen tile layer. So Leaflet has stamen sort of built in to like quickly grab it. Uh, I want to use the watercolor, because that's a fun one. Uh, and then I'm making a new map. I'm telling it where the center point is. I'm telling it what the zoom is. Uh, and then I add this base layer down here. In the meantime, I'm getting some JSON from my local uh, file system. I've just sort of saved it locally. And I'm iterating over it. And for each feature in that GeoJSON, I'm adding a pop-up. So I just want to know, so this is, these are trailheads. So I want to know what the name of the trailhead is. So if I go to slash trailheads, 
There we go. We've got a syntax error in my JSON. So this is a, like a totally different base map, right? That's kind of fun. But just like that, in like a few lines of code, I've loaded up some data, and I've got points on the map, and I can see, oh, where do I want to go hiking? All right. Any questions so far? Good. Leaflet, leaflet, yeah. Yeah, so leaflet in this case is driving the sort of uh, sandwiching all the components of the map together and like managing everything for you. Uh, leaflet has really great documentation, so like don't hesitate to like go Google for things. And um, this L is sort of the, the global for leaflet, right? So the, yep, yep, so when you reference L, you're referencing the leaflet library there. Um, okay. Okay, so like I said, data layers, I use GeoJSON on that one. Um, you'll traditionally find things in terms of shapefile, which is a, um, a more expanded format of geodata. You can easily convert it to GeoJSON. Um, and I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. And sometimes you'll find data in JSON format, right? If you're using an API like Foursquare or um, Yelp or any other sort of data that's provided by API, right? Um, there's tools to process it. So if you want to use desktop software to like look at your data and play around with it, QGIS is a great open source tool. If you want to translate your data from, uh, say, shapefile, if you get uh, government data, a lot of times it's in shapefile, um, you might want to convert it to GeoJSON, and there's a reason for that. There's a really cool command line tool called OGR to OGR. Um, and if you convert your data, let me see here. Do I have, I meant to pull this up. So uh, that GeoJSON uh, trailhead thing that we just looked at, if you have GeoJSON data, GitHub will render it for you, which is pretty cool. So you can like load your data up there. You can change it. You can store your data in Git history. And you've got a ready-made map right there to look at, which is like pretty sweet. And then you click on it, and it shows you all the data available in that point. All right. So again, finding data, uh, government sites. You know, if you don't have, you might have your own data, right? But maybe you want some other data to relate it to. Uh, Census Bureau has great data on all kinds of stuff. Uh, USGS, uh, the National Park Service has a database called Irma, uh, and then Boulder County and City. They also have a great GIS system, as well as uh, the Denver Region. There's a thing called Dr. Cog. Denver Regional Council of Governments, I believe. So they provide a lot of data as well. Um, if you're looking for data and you're like not sure how to find it, search terms to use include whatever geodata, look for whatever shape file, because that's traditionally what it will be stored in, and then also Google around GIS. Um, so using the data that you found, uh, double check you're allowed to use it. Make sure that it makes sense to use it. Like, Is it really old and outdated? Is it complete, or is it someone's pet project that they abandoned halfway? Um, make sure you can get it into a format you can use. Again, if it's in a shapefile, convert it to GeoJSON. Um, here's some quick instructions on how to do that, just so you can see how easy it is. You brew install it with homebrew, and then you use this ogre to ogre uh, command. You tell it, you, I want it to be in GeoJSON. Uh, CRS84 is a projection, so that GitHub will display it nicely. And you tell it the name of the GeoJSON file you want, the name of the shape file that you're putting in. It's that easy. OK, so user interactions really quick. Uh, the library that you choose to use, whether it's like Google Maps API or Leaflet, it'll handle the basics for you, which is really nice. You can customize it all you want. Um, again, like these open source libraries have really great documentation. Um, adding pop-ups to your points is usually just adding some HTML. And styling it, like grabbing the data that's associated with that point and displaying it. Um, most of the interactions on a map are event handlers that you used to, like click handlers, like click events, right? You guys are used to that. So, okay, now, real quick, let's all be badasses 
I want you to know about some tools that will wow even your cat. <laughs> right? So heat maps. Heat maps are pretty cool. Uh, it's basically a way of showing concentrations of things. Um, so this map, this demo that I have. So it's a plugin for Leaflet. When I mouse over it, it's like catching my, my scroll events, my mouse overs, and building that heat map. I could like, do that for hours. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, cool base maps we've already talked about a little bit. Uh, there's plenty more than I've shown you. Uh, there's always new ones coming up. Uh, Cardo, which is a, a really cool company, uh, they have a thing called Torque.js. Uh, it's displaying spatial data over time, which is like for a long time was a real problem. How do we do this uh, without like building GIFs? That was what used to happen. So with Cardo, um, this is sort of what it looks like when you go into Cardo, you go to your website. Uh, I built this map. So you can look at your data that you upload to them and you say like, okay, I've got all this cool data. Uh, and then I want to make a map to share with the public. So this is um, snowy owls, which are the big white owls like in uh, Harry Potter. They live up in the Arctic and in the winter they come down south. So this was data that I pulled um, over a few months, a few years ago. And you can just see like the reports of snowy owls over time, which is pretty cool. And you can do cooler stuff than birds if you're not into birds. I can't think of anything cooler, but <laughs> that's me. Uh, so people have used that for things like ship, ship traffic, airplane traffic, anything that moves over time. And you can show um, fluctuations and patterns with that. So it's really cool stuff there. Uh, Turf.js is another one. Uh, it's basically doing GIS analysis in the browser or uh, server side on your node server, which is like mind boggling to me still. Um, a lot of times geospatial analysis is pretty intense. You usually do it sort of at like a database level. Um, so that's a really cool library to play with too. Uh, and then finally, like who says you need to map in two dimensions? Uh, have any of you heard of WebGL? Sort of, yeah, sort of an up and coming thing. It was like really hard a few years ago. Now it's sort of reaching um, the point where like people are like actually making really cool stuff with it. So Cesium is one company, one group that's doing it. Uh, basically, like making three dimensional point clouds, three dimensional maps. And they take a little bit of time to load. My computer's slow. Just thinking about it. There we go. So this is cool. I can like mouse around this. I don't know what I've got turned on, but these are all like 3D. But I'm just like moving around and there's these like 3D shapes on the earth. I don't know, it's pretty cool. Um, here's another example that I found that I wanted to share with you. Um, and these, these uh, two websites also have like tons of data on them, tons of examples. Um, so this is, so Point Cloud is really big in GIS. Uh, there's a thing called LIDAR, which is laser. It's basically, you take laser, you take data with lasers, so you get three-dimensional data points that people use for things like utility lines and construction, like is that dam sinking and like distorting over time? But these Point Clouds, yeah. So this is really cool. Like you can like this 3D point cloud, and this is like millions and millions of points, which is hard to render. And I can zoom in on it. They've got them all colored. So the things you can do with this are pretty endless, right? Like, and this is this is like some sort of coordinate plane. So it doesn't even have to be a real world a real world coordinate plane, which is cool. You do all kinds of stuff. All right, so that is it. I've talked enough. Uh, if you want to learn more, again, uh, the GitHub uh, repo where all those examples, the code examples I showed you, uh, is there. There's some really great tutorials that Leaflet, Mapbox have. If you're interested in mapping with D3, there's D3 GeoMap, which I found earlier this week. Um, 
If you're really into it, there's some meetups. Map time is run by, um, sort of affiliated with OpenStreetMap. Um, but it's all kinds of mapping stuff. Uh, there's one in Boulder. There's one in Denver. There's global ones if you're traveling. If you're going back to Chattanooga, there's probably one there. Um, Geospatial Amateurs in Denver is a more uh, traditional GIS group. So if you're really into GIS stuff and maps, that's a really cool group. Uh, other than that, thank you. Yeah. I know I blazed through a lot of stuff kind of fast. Are there any questions? What led to your obsession with maps? Yeah, Maps and birds. Two different stories. Two different stories. Uh, so, so what led to my obsession with maps? Uh, in college, I, I was going to be an archaeologist. And I took a class on GIS to help me be a better archaeologist. Right? How do I map my site? How do I map my finds? How do I relate it to the bigger picture of the world? Um, ended up uh, doing a GIS internship with the Park Service. That was really cool. Um, did a, a number of other GIS jobs uh, for a couple of years. Uh, and I've liked maps ever since. Uh, maps are cool, right? Um, birds. Yeah, so why am I obsessed with birds? Uh, I worked for the Park Service on the Deepwater Horizon oil spill cleanup. And my job was to protect resources. So. Make sure we don't destroy sand dunes, uh, sea turtle nests, that sort of thing, while we're cleaning up the resources. Um, part of my job was to look for endangered bird species showing up. And they just looked like little gray birds. Like the rest of them, they're all shorebirds. And, uh, but it got me paying attention to the weird birds that I saw. I was like, holy cow, who do I have to call about this bird? And I'd like pull out my like bird guide and I'm like, oh, this is like really common here. And I'm like, what is this thing? I've never seen it before. So that, that got me hooked on birds. But yeah. Other questions? Were you the one coding the cats into Bentley's code there? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I should have been. I should have been. Yeah. Next time. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah.